All right, gang, today we're going to build an exposed soil hillside. Okay, so we are in Burmas here. We're at the east bank of the Crow's Nest River, looking west towards the west siding switch at Burmas. And this is an area that I had roughed in uh, prior, but wasn't happy with how it looked. So what I'm going to do between the siding and the backdrop here is just add some elevation. Uh, in the November 2020 layout update video I just shot, it shows a hill that I was working on. This is that hill. So I documented it then, figured I'd show you how I came about building that. So what I got here is just some old chunks of styrofoam that are laying around from prior projects. And uh, I'm just roughly hacking them up to give me a general outline of the hill that I want to put in here. I'm not concerned with the, the overall shape yet, but I do try to keep them square. So then uh, don't end up with large gaps between the chunks that are going to have to be filled in. Right, so we have our pieces all cut out and they're test fit and now we're going to prep the base uh, using a, a rasp here and just uh, getting it as flat as I possibly can so that those chunks will sit nice and bond well. And then I'm going to give them a zap with some spray contact. Use spray contact because it's quick. I can uh, continue working, you know, a minute delay, let the stuff set up, press it into place, and a minute later you're back working at this thing again. You don't have to wait for things to dry. Some of the spray contacts out there will go after the styrofoam, so test it out. If it does, use it sparingly so it's not melting big holes in your styrofoam, otherwise you're not going to get a good bond out of things. So as soon as that's uh, glued up in place, you can go at it with the knife again and uh, do a little bit more shaping of your hill. All right, so I like to uh, use the vacuum and the rasp at the same time here to keep the uh, styrofoam chunks from flying all over the place. And what I'm gonna use the rasp for is just the point of it, I'm gonna break off the front uh, face of this hillside. What you're doing is you're just going horizontally, and like I said, you're breaking off the styrofoam versus actually rasping it down and you're creating a really really rough texture. Top of the hill can be rasped down in a traditional manner that's no big deal but what you want to end up with is a really really sharp vertical lines. And then you're going to mix up a batch of sculpt mold and grab an old toothbrush. The toothbrush is going to be used to accentuate the lines vertically on that front face and it also you're going to use it to push the material into any cracks or crevices that don't belong. Uh, and then uh, on the last pass, what I do is I'll push the material down, any excess material down with that brush, and it's going to represent soil that has fallen off that face and it's gathered at the base of that hill. When you're happy with that, uh, the last little thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your finger, you're going to go along that front uh, edge uh, on the overhang, and you're going to draw material over the top and what that's going to represent is uh, foliage, grass, whatever that's grown over the top and the dirt has fallen out from underneath it. We'll let that uh, sit for a few days and set up. Alright that's dried up nice now we're gonna hit it with some paint so I'm using uh, interior latex thin down with some water. It's probably about three parts paint, one part water roughly. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to brush that into the face of this hill. I'm not going to worry about anything but the face at this point in time. So get it in there, work it into all the cracks, uh, all the little crevices, make sure you get uh, good coverage here. And while that paint's still wet, you're going to take some artist acrylic. I'm using raw sienna and raw umber here. And you just give it, give it a little bit of streaking vertically in some of the recesses to add some shadow and some depth to everything. Uh, you want to blend it in. You don't want stark lines. You want it to be quite subtle here. Once you're happy with that, just let it dry out for a little bit. And then we're going to take some unbleached titanium acrylic. We're going to mix it with our latex tan. Uh, you want a nice light color here. And you want to remove most of it from the brush because you're going to kind of do a dry brush here. You're going to bump that lighter color along the protruding uh, surface of that hill. Working it back and forth and kind of blending it in nicely. Remember this stuff's going to dry a little bit darker than what you see when it's wet. So 
just go back and forth, give it a little bit of time to dry, and uh, you can always go back in afterwards and do a little bit more highlighting. And all this is going to do is it's going to really add to that depth that you see in this hillside. So just working back and forth, scrub it into any places where you think the uh, contrast is too much, and when you're done, let it sit dry up before we proceed to the next step. Okay, once you're finished with your blending and it's all dried up, you're going to paint some of that latex uh, mix over the top. And in essence, this is going to be uh, our first layer of glue. So you want to make sure that this goes on uh, relatively uh, thick and stays wet throughout the first process here. Once that paint's on, the first step that I'll do is I'll take some sanded tile grout and I'll sprinkle random patches into the wet paint. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us bare patches as it's going to act as a mask. So when you apply your static grass, the static grass isn't going to stick to the entire hillside. Wherever there's uh, the tile grout down, you're going to get a bare patch as the grass won't stick to it. Because I'm using that latex as glue, I like to do everything quickly so I have everything close at hand. So as soon as you got that tile grout down, you're on to the static grass. Uh, whatever color you want to use doesn't matter. I use Silver Autumn 4 mil for the most part. It best represents the area I'm modeling. Uh, once your static grass is down, nylon over the end of the suck hole, and you're going to remove any excess material. Then you're going to sprinkle some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf into the static grass just randomly. It brings out uh, the richness of that. And vacuum the excess material up again. And we're on to the next step. So I've got a uh, water and glue mix loaded up into the body of a syringe here and I'm just going to drip that over top of the scenery. There's a drop of detergent in there too because it's going to help with uh, any surface tension you might run into. And what I do is I'm going to press in some Woodland Scenics coarse turf into any areas where I'm dripping that glue. And that's just going to give you your first course of texture, give you a little bit more interest and uh, represents kind of a different type of bush. It's not imperative that this step is done when everything's wet. You can go back afterwards and add this uh, after everything's dried up. All right, so let's just quickly get this scene roughed in right to the front edge here. So we're going to paint on our latex, and we're going to sprinkle on our tile grout, zap it static grass right away, sprinkle over our fine turf. And then what I did there was I just hit it with a little wet water, and some glue mix and I added my first streaking of ballast as this is a hillside right up against the main line there's going to be a little bit of ballast streaking so I'll put that right into the wet scenery at the same time. I'm pressing in my coarse turf and then I'm going to let this dry up. After everything dried up I went in and I put down some individual grass tufts, um, laid the rest of the ballast and then uh, decided to go at the backdrop here. I've had multiple requests to do a backdrop video, so while I was building this hill I shot the painting of the backdrop at the same time, so I'll link that at the end if you guys want to have a look. Alright, we'll paint a few trees here. We're going to dust the tops of those mountains with some snow, plant some trees, weather up the track, and uh, watch something roll through the scene, see what it looks like. All right, so there it is, getting close to the finished product. Uh, always more detailing can be done, of course, but uh, getting down to the nitty gritty here. So I hope you found that useful, enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we will talk soon.